Basic medical sciences, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about vitamin B1, also known as thiamine. Right, this is a water-soluble vitamin. As usual, we are going to start with uh, the characteristics. Right, so what are the forms of vitamin B1 or forms of thiamine? The active form is known as thiamine pyrophosphate or TPP. Right, so it's thiamine plus two phosphates, right? So there is phosphorylation of thiamine, right? So we can say like the activation is via intracellular phosphorylation of thiamine, right? What about the sources of uh, vitamin B1? Mainly whole grain cereals like whole wheat, brown rice, yeast, pork, legumes, for example, ground nuts or round nuts right so in most equations you need to pay attention here they tell you that the patient has been eating a polished rice or processed rice right so in that case just to remember it will be what thiamine deficiency right okay what about resorption right for resorption there are specific uh, uh channels for thiamine these are called Thiamine transporters 2, right? Thiamine transporter 2 is the main channel, also known as uh, THTR2. What about transport in blood, right? So this is mainly via blood cells and about only 20% is free or bound to albumin, right? Okay. Now, let's talk about the functions of uh, thiamine, right? So, as I told you uh, in the introduction videos, water-soluble vitamins, most of them act as cofactors, right? So, for thiamine, thiamine is actually a cofactor for several enzymes involved in carbohydrate and amino acid metabolism, right? So, there are four enzymes which you need to remember. Uh, like which this enzyme is use thiamine as a cofact, right? And they include pyruvate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate acid dehydrogenase. Okay, I, I said alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase or alpha ketoglutaric acid dehydrogenase. It's the same thing. The next enzyme is transketolase. And the last one is branched chain keto acid dehydrogenase, right? So let's start with the first one, pyruvate dehydrogenase, right? So this enzyme actually uh, connects the glycolysis to Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, right? So uh, like it acts like on uh, that step known as an uh, transition stage, right? from uh from pyruvate to acetyl coa right so if you still remember uh pyruvate is three carbon acetyl coa is two carbon right so it acts on this step the next one is uh alpha ketoglutarate right alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is found in the citric acid cycle right there is a specific step where alpha ketoglutarate is converted to succinyl CoA, right? So alpha ketoglutaric acid dehydrogenase acts on this step. The next one, transketolase, right? So transketolase is found on hexose monophosphate shunt, also known as the pentose phosphate pathway. Right, so this enzyme catalyzes two main reactions, right? The first one is conversion of uh, xylose 5-phosphate to ribose 5-phosphate, and that reaction is reversible. Uh, like, okay, so it, these are like in D isomers, right? Then the next one is a glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to D xylose 5-phosphate, right? And it's reversible again. Right, so these reactions, we will talk about them in pentose phosphate pathway video, right? Uh, but for now, just to remember, transketolase is found on excess monophosphate shunt. That is enough, right? Then uh, the last enzyme 
branched chain keto acid dehydrogenase right so this one acts on the conversion of uh these are uh, branched chain keto acids like valine right valine to, or or isoleucine right this one will be converted to uh propionyl coa right so it acts on this step and also conversion of leucine to acetyl coa right this step right okay so i'm going to give you a mnemonic which will help you to remember these enzymes right okay what does it say be something else right you can be atp be atp right in that order branch the chain keto acid dehydrogenase alpha ketoglutaric acid dehydrogenase or alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase transketolase and pyruvate dehydrogenase BATP right okay now let's talk about uh, vitamin B1 deficiency right what causes vitamin B1 deficiency right the first one is heavy drinking right this one is number one you need to remember it Chron those chronic alcoholics they suffer from a vitamin b1 deficiency right uh other causes include uh diarrhea prolonged vomiting diuretics hemodialysis malnutrition starvation and some malabsorption syndromes right but here remember the the main one is heavy drinking right and also on malnutrition just to remember this one okay so let's talk about a pathophysiology right what really happened is that uh if there is deficiency of thiamine this will lead to impaired glucose breakdown right if there is impaired glucose breakdown this will lead to atp depletion right they will be low atp right so as you know there are some tissues which are highly aerobic like brain or heart right these ones will be uh, damaged right so tissue damage that primarily affects high highly aerobic tissues uh for example as i said brain and heart uh, okay so the other thing which happens you need to know that uh high doses of glucose infusions will lead to increased atp depletion right so this will actually trigger uh venic encephalopathy right venic encephalopathy this one is is venic in latin right so in patients with uh with chronic alcohol overuse or malnutrition you give thiamine before dextrose right uh this will help you to reduce precipitating or exacerbating venic encephalopathy right you just need to remember that i will remind you again uh at the end of this video right for now let's talk about the clinical features right uh so the first one as you know is berry berry right so berry berry uh, i i told you the causes adequate thiamine uptake due to malnutrition or heavy drinking or increased demand for example during pregnancy or hyperthyroidism right so there are two kinds of berry berry there is dry berry berry and wet berry berry right let's start with dry berry berry right the features are as follows number one symmetrical peripheral neuropathy uh is both uh motor and sensory right the next one progressive muscle wasting confusion and paralysis right so this is dry berry berry for you what about wet berry berry this one we have like enlargement of the heart thus cardiomegaly edema and high output cardiac failure thus dilated cardiomyopathy 
Right. How do you remember? Like on dry berry berry, you can see that these features are actually uh, associated with the uh, nervous system, right? So nervous system, that's dry berry berry. And then on wet berry berry, just remember edema, right? So that's wet berry berry for you. Right. Okay. In infants, there is another special one. Right, it's called infantile beriberi, and the features are, are cardiomegaly. I told you that's enlargement of the heart, tachycardia, cyanosis, aseptic meningitis, vomiting, and seizures. Right, uh, then the other feature is called uh venike encephalopathy and Korsakoff syndrome right in most cases they just refer to these two as one like venike Korsakoff syndrome but they are two different conditions with different presentations right so let's start with uh venike encephalopathy right so this one is mainly we can say it's acute and it's reversible right so that's why it's in green right how do you remember the features? There is a mnemonic which says a venike scot, right? Venike scot, right? Cot for thus confusion, oculomotor dysfunction, ataxia, right? It's a triad. Thiamine administration is how you reverse this uh, venike encephalopathy, right? Because I told you it's, it's reversible, right? So I... Thiamine administration is just how you treat it, but the symptoms is a triad confusion, oculomotor dysfunction, and ataxia. Right. Let's talk about uh, the other one, Korsakoff syndrome. Right. Korsakoff syndrome, this one is uh, like an advanced stage, is is chronic and it's irreversible. And how do you remember this? This one is called Korsakoff scat. Korsakoff scat for confabulations, uh, anterograde, and retrograde amnesia, and also altered temper, right? So confabulation, just to remember, you know, like patients will be fabricating memories, right? They will tell you that they are remembering something which did not happen at all, right? Okay, uh, so... For diagnosis of, of vitamin B1 deficiency, what you do is like you administer uh, vitamin B1, right? And then you observe the patient. You will realize that there will be increased activity of a red blood cell transketolase, right? So this will con confirm the, what, the diagnosis, right? I told you I am going uh, in malnourished or alcohol dependent patients always administer thiamine before giving dextrose to decrease the risk of precipitating or exacerbating venike encephalopathy right then another uh, another way to remember like berry berry right just to remember uh, like how it's written vitamin b1 deficiency causes berry berry b1 b1 right yeah so uh, i didn't mark the second b this one berry berry okay but you can remember it that way right thank you so much thank you for watching if you like this video please make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of our latest videos because we'll be uploading videos at least two times a week thank you so much head bowed.